our channel, we are Deuce Garage. We are talking tools and in the fixing cars. Make sure that you subscribe, cause all the stars you'll see. If you've got a project, this is where you wanna be. Deuce Garage, welcome to Deuce Garage. Yeah, we're talking cars. All right, today on Duke's Garage Do-It-Yourself Repair Series, we're going to put a steering rack on this 2009 Nissan Pathfinder. Um, just to give you a little history about this truck, it uh, belongs to my nephew. Um, he bought it a few years back. This truck has lived most of its life up in the Northeast. Um, is now here down in the Southern States uh, here in Texas. Uh, getting some much needed relief from the, the salt and the snow which has left a good bit of rust underneath of that that truck that we've had to deal with and uh, we've used some um, rust inhibitor underneath of there um, I may show you some of that when we get under the truck but um, I've done some different jobs on this uh, this truck um, we've done uh, fuel pump uh, spark plugs um, brakes so today he's needing a steering rack uh, his seals are, bl are blown and all of his fluid have escaped out the seals and into the parking lot of his job so we gotta swap this rack out for him um, fairly difficult job but it's, it's definitely not you know an engine or transmission but it's gonna be some work we'll be underneath the truck for a little bit uh, fortunately with uh, most trucks you'll have a nice bit of space there um, unless you're dealing with something that's very compact but anything like this this is what about two and a half ton uh, vehicle so the first step is getting this thing up in the air um, we're gonna get the jack the jack stands out and get the wheels off and we'll start digging in real quickly right in front of it here is a 1995 Lexus SC400 that is the subject of a current build we're doing here on Duke's Garage um, if you'd like to see how this is going to progress and um, goes through please you know subscribe to our channel um, take a look at the video if you like what you see please give us a like also if you like you can um, hit the little bell there in the corner and get notifications um, we're gonna be doing uh, several episodes on the build of this vehicle and uh, you'll get to see me walk it through but back to this Here's a look at the steering rack and um, all the connections. Um, you'll see the three bolts here that hold the rack to the frame and the brackets there, uh, the connections. And we have a look here at the inner and outer tie rods. Um, and uh, that's really mainly it. Um, you know, it's really those three bolts and those uh, outer tie rod ends that hold it all in place. And then you have a high pressure and low pressure connection at the uh, the rack there. All right, let's go over the steps um, to do this job. So, first step: uh, set the front wheels in the straight ahead position. We're going to remove the front tires from the vehicle. Uh, remove that undercover. Uh, on four-wheel drive models, and this car is a four-wheel drive model, it does recommend the removal of the final drive. Uh, then we'll be still required then after that to uh, support the drive shafts um, and uh, it's it's you know quite a bit of work actually um, I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat on this um, I'm going to lower the final drive and create enough room to slide the rack out the work involved to remove the final drive is pretty considerable so I opted to do this uh, little cheat but you know, do it at your own risk. Um, I will quickly review the steps necessary to actually remove the final drive as it is the manufacturer's recommendation. The next step is to pull the, the cotter pins from the um, outer tie rod ends. Uh, you don't want everyone to reuse those. If, if, you know, what I did, we did is we bought new outer tie rod ends. The ones on the vehicle were pretty well shot as I'll show you. So um, they came with new cotter pins. Next step is to remove the outer tie rod ends, and um, we're not going to be reusing ours, but uh, we'll show you a trick on how you can uh, save your outer tie rod ends if yours happen to still be in good condition you want to reuse them. Next step is remove the high pressure and low pressure piping from the uh, steering gear or from the, the rack and pinion. 
Uh, here's a little picture of what we're dealing with. Uh, the high pressure piping, as I'll describe later, actually on this vehicle was rusted and uh, frozen. So um, there's a little uh, sensor there at the, uh, the high pressure line. And that sensor is supposed to actually rotate around the pipe uh, that goes in there. Our seized together, so whenever I went to break it loose, it the whole thing spun with it, and uh, I had to just cut the pipe, and we had to buy another one. So I'm going to show you the uh, the new pipe and uh, where we went to uh, purchase that, but we had no issue with the low pressure line. Then we're going, then we're going to remove the uh, bolt from the uh, linkage and the the pinion for the uh, steering gear. So that bolt will pop out, and I'll, we'll, we'll show you how that worked. Uh, we had to lube ours down with some uh, PB blaster or liquid wrench to get it free, but um, it, it came out okay. It, we had to kind of persuade the linkage with a little tapping to uh, get it off of the, uh, the pinion. Okay, we'll remove the bolts that hold the rack to the vehicle. And then we'll, at that point, we'll be able to slide the rack out. So one of the nice things about trucks is most of them or many of them have uh, traditional frames on them so it's easy to find a safe jacket point on, on most trucks. So under here we have our frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably hit her here. I just got to keep in mind I need to keep a place open to uh, put the jack stand in. So I could jack in the center of the truck and lift up the whole front end but I feel a little safer just jacking one, in, one half at a time. Get up in the air. We're at the first wheel here. Um, I'm fortunate, as I mentioned, to uh, have air tools, air gun, impact gun. Um, if you're using hand tools, obviously what you want to do is uh, leave the car on the ground. Nice, nice breaker bar. Crack all your your uh, lug nuts loose while the car is on the ground. That'll, that'll keep you from putting any stress on the transmission if you try to take them off while the car is up in the air. So you're going to need a 21 millimeter socket for these lugs. Um, but whenever you have an impact gun, you can lift the car first and then uh, just smack them off with the impact and it won't, won't do any harm to your to your transmission but the cranking force you would put on the uh, the transmission um, by trying to break these loose up, up, up off the ground is, is not good for your for your car so again leave the car on the ground so that way the ground will keep in the way of the vehicle will keep the wheels uh, in place crack them loose then you can jack them up and use your safety. We're just going to speed this section up here and remove these lug nuts. I'd like to apologize. As you can tell, I'm running into some audio difficulty. Um, we'll probably be looking to upgrade. We're going to disconnect the steering uh, linkage from the steering rack. That linkage runs up to the steering wheel. Once we disconnect it from the rack, the wheel will, it will be able to spin freely. Uh, this creates a problem for your uh, wound coil for your um, your uh, airbag and um, that wound coil is only uh, designed to rotate so far um, once you spin it past its you know kind of end point you can snap that wound coil so to prevent this we're going to be tying up this wheel and um, holding it steady in place to prevent it from spinning and, and destroying the uh, the spring uh, the, the wound coil for the airbag they can, be, they can be pretty pricey to replace as well, so um, this is just a safety precaution that's recommended by the manufacturer. I'm going to tie the wheel down with some length of a uh, cord. Um, you know, a bungee cord or bungee cable would work really great for this. I, I couldn't find one, um, you know, handy in my garage. So, so it's not very pretty, but um, it is effective. The wheel is locked in place. I use the uh, little grab hold there as kind of a anchoring point to wrap it off. Next step is to remove this cotter pin from the outer tie rod link. Um, so this cotter pin here needs to come out. We're going to pop that out of there. That allows us to back off this bolt. Then we can knock the uh, 
outer uh, tie rod in out of the uh, steering knuckle. So let's uh, pull that out. So what you can do is take like a screwdriver or something. See how I'm doing? And just straighten that thing out. There's another piece on here. Let's work it around. There you go. Then you can take your needle nose pliers and bring them together so they're snug, straighten them out. You can tap them out. Use a hammer and give them the encourage this thing to move forward. Nope. So it looks like she might be frozen. This car living a lot of its life up north. Most things on it are rusty and frozen. So the next thing to do is to get a, a little pick tool or something and stick it into the uh, little eyelid at the top part here and push tap it out from this side um, if it's still not working we can put some uh, penetrating oil on it to free it up so let's try uh, the next thing to do is take like a pick and uh, tap it that way so I got a little pick here a little pick tool I'm gonna put it at the top of the cotter pin and tap on it so we encourage it to come out doesn't look like it wants to move Let's try rotating it a little bit in there, just to see if we can get it to do anything for us. Huh. No luck there. some of this uh, PB blaster um, or you could use some liquid liquid wrench as well just to see if I can free up this cotter pin I tap the uh, top of the uh, the bolt there just to kind of work the fluid in and here I am trying to uh, work this cotter pin loose but <laughs> what will be revealed shortly is that the pin is totally frozen in there so we're going to use um, a trick I picked up from YouTube. We're going to have to get pretty aggressive. So I can see Mr. Nissan's going to fight me the whole time here. But I took a pair of wire cutters and cut down the cotter pin. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our socket and our impact gun. So if you don't have uh, impact and have air, you'll have to do it the old-fashioned way with a with a with a, uh, a wrench here. But preferred method is actually to use air on this thing so let's uh, go ahead and uh, spin this thing free sure shit has worked it sheared the uh, cotter pin right off just like uh, the video I uh, just showed you um, big thanks to uh, clown <laughs> I think it's clowny that's clowny1969 Really appreciate his help on that. You see, it worked perfectly. See what this YouTube community, uh, community is all about is, you know, all of us helping each other. So his uh, cotter pin removal uh, video helped me out of a jam. So if you wanted to save this uh, outer end, the trick I learned years ago was to spin this thing back down to where the nut is just coming down to the top of the of the uh, stud for the uh, outer tie rod in and then you can take your hammer smack it down and once it pops free when you spin the nut off it'll um, fix any of the the threads that may have been uh, smashed as you were hitting with the hammer so then you'll you know kind of re-thread the um, the stem and you'll be able to put the nut back on but in this case we're not going to be reusing this so all we got to do is just give it a whack and she's out Okay, so we're underneath the vehicle now, as you can see. Uh, we're going to remove this uh, undercover. This is kind of like a little skid plate uh, that's covering up the sway bar. So there's uh, these bolts here I'm pointing to. They're 8 millimeter. And I'm going to use my quarter inch 8 millimeter uh, ratchet and socket just to break them loose a little bit. Now I'm going to take my variable speed drill and put the socket on there and the, with the attachment and just run them down real quick 
and I'll get the other side here. Then under the bumper cover, uh, right here, there's uh, two holes that reveal the upper bolts for this uh, this uh, under uh, undercover. So we're gonna pull those out. You'll need a little extension to get up in there to grab those. So once those are out, the undercover slides right out of there. And now you can see the sway bar. You can see uh, the bolts uh, peeking out there for the uh, rack. Make sure you uh, collect your your bolts, your screws, and um, you know put them safely with the uh, plate. All right, here's the uh, bolts for the sway bar, and right behind that are the bolts for the steering rack. And now we're taking a look at the final drive for the vehicle. And uh, per the instructions, as I mentioned, uh, that whole thing is supposed to come out of there and along with the drive shaft. So, um, yeah, there's some bolts right there where my hand's at. But uh, we're going to do a little work around on this. Right here is the, uh, I think that's the, the uh, drain line for the... Uh, gear oil. If you're going to take that out, you have to drain the gear oil out of the uh, final drive. Here are the connections for the uh, uh, high pressure, low pressure to the rack. And you can see that once it right, it's looking pretty bad. All right, so we're back at the uh, sway bar. And you'll see that the upper connections, um, the upper uh, part of the, the bar slotted I'll show that to you and here's the uh, bolt for the end links for the uh, sway bar you have to remove that bolt on both sides uh, of the sway bar and then um, take it loose there there's the three bolts for the rack so we'll pull those out after we get the sway bar out of the way Alright, so I found it easier to uh, loosen that up with the breaker bar first, and then I believe after that I, I ran it out with my uh, impact gun, but you can just use your ratchet wrench and the socket. Just take a little longer. Alright, so we have the uh, end link off as well, and you'll I'm showing you here that the end link is really shot, but nephew didn't buy those parts and uh i wasn't aware that those were were dead or i may have would have bought it for him but we'll have to come back and replace those but for the sake of this job we're going to go ahead and just throw it back together let me get this last one what's nice is these top bolts you just have to loosen them you don't have to take them all the way out because they're slotted so we can but you can see the um sway bars come out now and um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you here. Those are the slotted, the slotted points on the, on the top. So you can see I can leave the top in place, just loosen them up, and just pull the bottom bolts. Now I'm putting the bolts back in just to you know, keep them safe and not get lost. All right, so now we're back here at the bolts for the steering rack. We'll go ahead and pull those. And also uh, work on these two connections for the steering rack high pressure so that's low pressure this is another look at the uh, connection at the steering rack and you can see the high pressure line it's really looking rusty and it's about to give me a whole lot of trouble <laughs> so that's supposed to screw up out of there and rotate around the uh, point this is the uh, bolt for the um, that's connection from the steering linkage to the pinion so I had to hose that down with some uh, liquid wrench or PB blaster to get that free, but I pulled that out. All right, now I'm uh, using that uh, extension and socket and uh, universal joint to pull out that bolt. All right, so we got some cardboard in place. Now we're gonna go in here and see if we can break these, uh, these lines loose. I have these little stubby pliers that I'm gonna use to take that little uh, clamp off the uh, low pressure line. You can compare these to a uh, full length size to get a sense of how the difference in size is here. So these little stubbies are fit in there real nice. So let me zoom in here a little bit. 
All right, so you can see the the clamp. I already started coaxing it out of, you know, off of the uh, the nipple there, and uh, what I'm gonna do is. Take this guy up in here. Grab hold of this this clamp. Squeeze down on it. See if I can rotate it some. I'm gonna go get a drip pan. Pop this guy off. Get it out the way. All right. So we got the drip pan here, just in case. Rotate this back in position. And just start to wiggle this line here. Start to let me get it to come off the the nipple. There it comes. Yeah. Now we're fortunate that the uh, fluid has already leaked out of this thing, so we're not worried about a whole bunch of fluid running out. What you can do is siphon off the fluid up at the reservoir, the power steering reservoir. Uh, to get as much of it out of there as you possibly can but all of ours leaked out of the seals um, you can see over here there's fluid from the leak problem so now we just need to get this little nut here okay so this is a 14 millimeter and we're going to crack that loose here you see all the rust on this thing it's making me nervous there we go I'm trying to keep working it around and loosen this up and take it off all right so this is what's left of part of the um, high pressure tube, high pressure line. This connection right here is supposed to back out from this uh, sensor, this pressure. I guess I don't know what type of sensor this is, but it's it's labeled as a sensor in the catalog. But um, is this is supposed to back off and this is supposed to remain in the rack. And then After closer examination of this part, when I received the new part, um, it's clear that the um, bolt there the um, the sensor part that's in my hand is supposed to rotate around that tube unfortunately the tube and the sensor became seized so I could not get the bolt to spin around that tube and um, you know it, it hopefully if you're doing this job you won't have this issue so you'll be able to just back that that sensor out from the rack it'll spin free, freely around the tube and then you can just leave that there on the uh, frame of the vehicle and pull your rack out then this piece of tube is supposed to remain on the, the frame of the vehicle when you slide the rack out. This thing is, you know, frozen shut. I mean, there was no getting it off. It just rusted right in place. I mean, it was no, I don't even think a torch would get this thing off as, as well as it's on there. So I had to go ahead and just cut my way out of it uh, and back this thing out of the rack. We bought a new tube and uh, the, the new tube's coming today. I'll show it to you whenever it comes in. Um, for the, the dealership, I went to the dealer, and the dealer uh, was selling the entire hose assembly, $258 at my local Nissan dealer. I looked online, you can get that entire hose assembly for around $50, $60. Um, you can buy just the two portion for around $15. So let me show you right here what we're working with. Um, I'll put it up here on the screen. So the steering rack is now loose, and see here, I tried to sneak it through this little hole here, just not coming out. All right, we're going to remove the center uh, cross member. Be prepared. Be prepared to double wrench this. They're 17 millimeter. Um, see, I need a 17 millimeter wrench on one side where the nuts at. And then a 17 millimeter socket on the other side. I'm going to take this extension with the universal joint and back her out. Alright, she's 
tight. Let's come from the other side. All right, I found it easier to get these bolts loosened initially with a breaker bar and my full body weight. So I put the wrench on the other side here and uh, then I just I grabbed the wrench with one hand and pushed down with the other. So just a matter of using your weight to uh, help get this going. And now I can use my little anemic amount of air <laughs> to back off these these bolts and get them out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and crack the other side loose and uh, get them loosened up first and then I'll come back out here, spin these bolts off, push them through, then the whole center cross member will drop out. So we have the bolts loose and I took the two bolts out from the passenger side. Here's the last bolt on the driver's side. Let's see if this little cross member wants to fight me. Hopefully it'll just pop out. Probably should go get a crowbar or a pry bar and in there pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna get a pry bar. There she goes. So a nice thing that Nissan did for us, just to make sure we put the cross member back in the correct orientation, it has uh, a little arrow here to tell you which way uh, the front of the car should be. So that means you know that this is the passenger side, that's the driver side. So a nice little reference mark they put on there for you. So we're back under the vehicle. So we're back under the vehicle and. Um we're going to take a look here at the bolting points and mounting points for that front differential. There's another one there. And then just behind that, there's another one. Um, didn't really get a good shot of it, but yeah, you kind of can get a look at it right there. So we'll go back to the audio. Pull the bolts and then see if we can just drop this thing down just an inch or so without stressing anything out. Um, I may even pop the axles out a little bit just to give it some room because um, I don't have to pull them all the way out of the out of the uh, final drive but just enough to uh, you know, take the get clearance. So if we can pull this off without having to actually remove the entire thing. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about this final drive for a quick second um, I referred to this earlier in the video and been talking about it throughout this video so this is the big job um, in my opinion in doing this um, doing this steering rack job so Nissan uh, is uh, calling out for the removal of this final drive and you know I mentioned I'll be doing a little bit of a cheat workaround but for those that want to do the exact uh, steps as Nissan calls out I just wanted to run through real quickly um, what's involved with pulling this final drive out. Um, I'm going to do my best to put a link in the description of the Nissan repair manual that I'm using. Uh, it's available free online, so I'll have to track down that link, and I'd like to put it up there for you. Um, the section of the, of the uh, repair manual is DLN, uh, as I recall. Um, all the sections are uh, under abbreviation usually like two letters or three letters so DLN uh, which is all those are kind of cryptic as well which is kind of frustrating you have to kind of open up a lot of them to kind of figure out what's what but D is in David L is in Lynn uh, N is Nancy I believe is the correct uh, one you're gonna look in to see how to remove the final drive so here's a look at it you can see one of the bolts mounting bolts there um, here's a schematic of the final drive and you'll see the, uh, the three bolts that hold it in place. Number one in the schematic is the breather tube, which we uh, will pop loose. And then we have the cross member, which we're going to remove or have removed, excuse me. So um, yeah, this is just like kind of a look at it. Um, here's the uh, actual step. So 
number one will drain the differential gear oil um, I think I pointed to the drain uh, nut for that and you'll have to drain it then refill it to the proper level uh, remove the drive shafts um, which usually involves um, taking the uh, upper ball joint separating that from the steering knuckle then allowing the steering knuckle to fall out creating uh, you know enough room to pop out the, uh, the half axles uh, once you get the axles out of there then you're going to um, you know make sure the cross members removed um, then you have to remove the uh, the drive shaft to your front drive shaft and it's important that you mark off the drive shaft before you uh, remove it from the car and I'll show you some uh, diagrams in a second on that um, you're going to support the, uh, the final drive with the jack uh, which you know I'll be doing as well and then you're going to um, lower it from the vehicle and take it out of there so after you take the bolts out which you know I'll, sh I'll be showing you um, the removal of those things so you know pretty much reverse of um, removal as it notes here and you can um, you know dig deeper into this whole process um, if I can just get you that link to this uh, repair manual but um, I'm just not really wanting to rip apart the uh, the front suspension and go through all this when I'm really only looking to gain a couple inches of space so um, definitely you know if you use my method do it at your own risk be very careful um, you don't want to throw the drive shaft out of out of its uh, I think it's called out of phase um, out of its um, position where you know it gets out of whack and next thing you know you have vibration problems and it's a big mess so there is some risk involved with it so the safer bet is to just drop the whole thing out and do as the instructions uh, dictate um, here's the uh, matching mark so before you pull the drive shafts out you want to make sure you run a nice mark usually with a, some kind of like paint pen or something like that to show you know the, the orientation of the drive shaft before you remove it because all this stuff is balanced uh, in relationship to each other so if you screw it up you're gonna have to you know some heck to pay to get it back right or have to take it into somebody to have it rebalanced so um, yeah it is a good bit of work so just wanted to uh, lay that out but um, you know it's definitely something you can tackle in your driveway but just know there's going to be uh, you know some steps involved and you definitely have to take caution okay so I'm gonna start working the first bolt loose I want to give you a note here that this is a 19 millimeter. You'll need to double wrench it with your 19 millimeter wrench. It's a long bolt too. Yeah. I use the breaker bar and a whole lot of strength and a little bit of this PB blaster, which is wonderful for cars that have been in the snow and the salt and everything else up north. I'm going to get my ratchet, my half inch ratchet, and work it loose from there. Alright, now we have the uh, breaker bar on the other side here. Uh, we're getting ready to break loose the uh, passenger side bolt from the uh, it holds the um, front final drive. And it was pretty snug, so I had to use some leg power to get that guy loose. And here's the jack underneath of the uh, of the final drive, ready to you know be supported and uh, use that to drop it down some. One more time. All right. You see this? Uh, I'm on the driver's side of the vehicle, looking up through the wheel well, and I'm gonna see if I can shine a light on this little hose. See that little black hose here? It's a breather hose that goes to the final drive. I was able to back off that that clamp that's on here with my hand I'm just gonna pop it loose popped it right loose with my hand I just want to get that off of the off the case before I drop it down here We've got the jack in place um, the jacks up underneath there now I'm gonna see if I can lower it down gently and see how much room I can make for the steering rack to slip through I'll pray with me because my nephew will be upset if I screw up this truck. What we got here? Definitely made a 
difference. There's definitely more room to come down. I think it's hanging up in the uh, hanging up in the uh, bracket. This bracket right here. It's kind of hung up in there a little bit. There we go. There we go. There we go. Good. Perfect. She's sliding out nice, just with the differential drop down there. So it looks like she's, she's bumping up on this, this shock. Worst case, I'm gonna take this bolt and just lever the shock out the way a little bit. Let me see if I can wrestle with her a little bit to uh, get her out without having to take the shock apart. But it looks like it's gonna work. We're not gonna have to pull the whole final drive out of the vehicle to get this guy out. All right, so the, I uh, just wanna show this to you real quickly. That's a 19 millimeter uh, wrench 19 millimeter socket it's a half inch uh, drive on it so I'm just spinning free this lower bowl on the shock and let's see how much play I can get on the shock tower to uh, lever out this uh, steering rack let me pull that out okay we have the strut out um, the coil over out and uh I tell you, it really is a much easier way to go than pulling out that whole front uh, final drive. So it's just the bottom bolt here. You got three of these uh, these stems here with bolts on them at the top. Right at the uh, t upper control arm. Pull those bolts. Things slides right out. I pulled the fender well uh, liner out of the way just so we could get a good look at what's going on. But with the strut, with the strut, the coilover out of the way. With the coil with the coil over out of the way, you can see how much room now we have to just pull this baby right on out without having to take out the entire uh, the entire there it goes the entire uh, diff. You see it there hanging there um, nicely there out of the way. So now we can pull the steering rack right on out. All right, so here's the old rack on the ground. And we had leakage coming out of the seals right here on both sides. It's flowing out of there pretty good. So these uh, seals are shot. And this rack is toast. It was also kind of tough getting the steering linkage off the top of this um, stem here. It goes to the drive for the steering rack. You see how rusty it is. Like everything else on this car. <laughs> it's just, this is a tough one, man. <laughs> I've been spoiled being down here in the uh, in the south with all these cars that have you know lived their lives down here and there really are not any rust issues um, so all your bolts break loose nice and easy uh, it's been a while since I've worked on cars and lived up north um, worked on cars up north um, you can see the condition of this rack is pretty rusty out rusty there all right so while you have the car all opened up here it's a good time to do some inspection. One thing I noticed is here's the valve cover. This is the driver's side uh, valve cover. Oops. And you can see it's seeping all over here. It's probably time to replace these, va these valve cover gaskets. So that's something to put on the list and look for a video from me about uh, on the repair of that in the future. Um, I would say with all this room here, it would sure be nice to go ahead and do these upper and lower control arms. Um, I'm pretty sure they're probably spent, <laughs> but um, my nephew is a college student and on a budget, so that's why the good uncle's out here doing this job for him. Uh, but yeah, I would say if you have the uh, the funds, if you're going to do the steering rack, there's so many might as well as you're going to run into. And one is if you're going to go ahead and drop the um, the front uh, drive, final drive out of there. You definitely want to inspect your uh, your axles real good. Make sure they're good. You'll be taking apart taking apart this steering assembly. So if you're going through that trouble, I would say just swap the parts while you're in there. And not have to come back. I, I'd imagine if the miles on this truck, these bushings have probably had it. If I was to pop this out of here, I'm betting that this uh, this ball joint's probably probably toast now. And same deal on the bottom. 
but uh, right now we're just going to go ahead and knock out this rack. So before I put everything back together, we have uh, power steering fluid all over the place. So I'm going to clean it up. I just don't like, I like to try to stay as neat as possible, work clean. I don't want to sit a new rack in a bed of old uh, power steering fluid and possibly mess up any of the, uh, the grommets, the, uh, the uh, bushings that are on the new uh, rack. So let's, uh, let's give this thing a, a nice little clean out real quick. All right, to clean, I really like this super clean here, this purple degreaser, biodegradable, uh, works really well. I've used it for years. Uh, I find it at Walmart, a bottle like this, probably about five bucks, I think it is. But you spray this stuff on the grease, and then I use an assortment of different brushes, but just agitate it, you know what I mean? Get in there and work it around, and then uh, come back with a hose and you can uh, get some of this grease out of here. So down underneath this, down in here, we got some dirt and so forth. Just wanna scrub that off and get rid of that power steering fluid. All right, here's the new rack, ready to go in. It's nice, it does come with a bracket here, a new bracket on the side, and a new bu a little, little grommet there, a little bushing on there for you. Same deal here, so all the brackets are there. Uh, see it's got a dust cover on it that's nice so yeah it looks like she's ready to go and we want to be careful not to uh, to turn anything not to move the rack it should be dead center right now so we want to you see you have this little this little circle here and it corresponds to this little circle there so that's indicating that it's at the center so you know, it's lined up there. So we're, uh, we're ready to drop this thing in. Okay, here's the, the hose that I was talking about earlier. I just disconnected it. This is from where it meets at the uh, power, um, power steering pump. And then down here is the tube that I'm going to have coming to mail today. Part of the tube. You saw the other half on the bench. But right here is where it connects. And of course what we have here is a bunch of rust. And I tried cracking it loose on the car. It wasn't budging. So I'm going to cut this tube off so I can put a socket on the on this nut here. And I'm going to put some heat to it as well to see if I can break up some of this rust and get it hot and expanding and contracting. And see if we can uh, break it loose. Also I'll douse it with some more of that, some more of that uh, PB blaster um, to see if we can get it to free up. But if not, we're going to need this entire hose. So something to keep in mind. Also... Um, you can you can try like to crack the connection loose at the steering rack um, before you uh, go any further. And if it comes loose, you know, easy for you, then you can go ahead and keep moving. But if it doesn't, you know, you need to order that order this line here. This this is the high pressure line for the uh, power steering. We have the, uh, the tube cut off here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my impact gun so it's got a 14 millimeter socket on there i'm going to hold the other side of this connection with this 21 millimeter box and wrench lock that in and then give it a smack and see what happens this could be interesting Nothing like persuasion. Damn, that came right on out. Well, I think we're going to be good to go then. So I'm going to clean up this. Uh, I'm going to clean up this uh, this opening, um, this this nut here, just to get some of that rust off of it. But uh, we should be okay. All right, now it's time to install the power steering rack. Right? So I'm going to carefully guide it in. You don't want to bump the ends because you can potentially rotate the, the uh, pinion on the rack and throw it out of center. The rack is centered at the factory whenever it's being remanufactured. So you're going to very carefully just ease it on in. Don't push on the ends. Grab the body of the, the rack and just walk it on in. Nice and easy. Turn this off. All right, 
but the rack is now in place. Slid it right in there, nice and easy. Uh, we had to remove the passenger side bracket off the rack to be able to really slide it in there without struggling too much. Um, let me see here. So we run the bolts through here. Okay, this bracket right up here. Let me turn the camera around. Point the other way. All right, this bracket right here, we popped it off because it was really bumping a lot of things as we're coming in because we still have the front uh, final drive in the car. So we took the bracket off, slid it in, put the bracket back on. So we're all set now. So now it's just a matter of tightening down these three bolts and finishing up the job. Now with the rack all bolted up, you just want to make sure our steering wheel is sitting perfectly straight. So I just kind of have it tied off to make sure that she's nice and straight. Now we can go around and hook up the uh, linkage, the steering linkage to the uh, pinion of the rack. All right, so here's a zoom in on that linkage. So we're just gonna slide it back down over the pinion, over the shaft here, and uh, it'll seat, it'll fully seat down. There it goes. And we want to get it down where the the bolt lines up with the uh, indention in the in the pinion, so the bolt will go all the way through. So we'll make sure we get this all the way seated down, and then we can uh, bolt that up. All right, now with the steering rack all bolted in, we have the linkage from the steering wheel um, left in. Now we're going to put the front drive, uh, final drive in place. So I'm going to jack it back up in position. And, let's see here, one, two, three. All right, and then we have some bolts that got to go through here one on each side and then one over here in the front let me see now to get an approximation about of where your tie rod end should be um, I took off I'm gonna take off these uh, I took off the uh, pass, passenger side already I'm gonna take off the driver side but what you can do is count the number of turns it takes to spin it off and then duplicate that when you put on your new tie rod ends on your new rack hopefully that would put it somewhere in the ballpark for your uh, alignment specialist uh, when you take it in because you definitely have to get your car aligned after doing this job so this guy's already in place. I, I turned it in. It was 16 and a half turns. Locked it down with the lock nut. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put it back inside the uh, steering knuckle. Tighten it down. All right, now we're going to put the strut back. Pop it right back in place here. All right, so we line it up with the, the bolts at the top with the holes. Line it right up. Then we'll push that guy into place. Put the bottom bolt in and then tighten down the top. And we'll move on to the cross member. All right, so this is the cross member I have here on the bench. And there's the rust that's coming around here. So. I cleaned this off with some uh, degreaser to get it nice and clean. Using this rust oleum rust reformer on all the rust I find, it'll convert the rust to something stable so it doesn't continue to travel. Uh, Eastwood also makes a really good rust inhibitor, or rust uh, converter. So um, yeah, if you, if you have a car that's you know if you live up north, or you have a car that lives up north, and you're finding a bunch of rusty parts or rusty areas. I mean, the part's still very solid and structurally sound, but it's got this surface rust. We don't want it to go any further, so I would definitely encourage you to use something like a rust converter, rust spray, 
to uh, go over top of these rust areas and prevent it from getting any worse. All right, so now we have the cross member all painted up. Put the rust preventer on there. And uh, remember our reference mark here. See it. It tells you where the front's at. So, it needs to be pointing this way. And then we have our four bolts. So, she's going to go back up here into those holes there. Bolt it back up. Tighten them down. Now it's time to fill the system. Uh, the rack is all installed and now we're going to fill the system up. This vehicle will take either a Nissan, you know, factory fluid, power steering fluid, but it's also, um, you know, the same as Dextron. Um, so I'll show you here on the screen the uh, spec for it. So we're using this uh, Vaveline Max Life Moldy Vehicle ATF that meets both Dextron and Mercon uh, specifications. So um, yeah, it works just fine. So we're going to fill up the, fill up the uh, reservoir. Then you'll need to bleed the system out. So that's just a matter of getting in the vehicle, turning the car on, turning the wheel from left to right several times. That will force the air out of the system. So you want to watch how much you're, you pour in there because you don't want it spilling over, but go in there, turn your wheels left to right, and it'll bleed the, uh, the air out of the system. Once you see the bubbles go away, you know that you're in good shape. It's been two weeks since we've done the uh, steering rack job, and the car is running fine. Uh, the steering rack is working great, uh, no issues. So. I'll call this a successful job. Um, it's been lined up and the alignment went fine. So uh, real happy with the job. Um, saved my nephew a considerable amount of money. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the video, uh, he had a $1,200 uh, estimate on that job. So um, he saved a, a good piece of money here. I'll show you the breakdown. Look for more jobs on this Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, we have an intake manifold we're going to do, a gasket on that, um, valve cover gaskets, uh, many more jobs coming for on this vehicle. So uh, if you happen to own a Nissan and uh, ne in need of some uh, repair advice on, on these cars, uh, subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye on it. Um, I'll be posting more videos. So thank you for watching and look for more from us from Deuce Garage.